Welcome to Crunch Time, a program dedicated to helping you survive the crunch times in your life, whether they are caused by accidents, natural disasters, poverty, economic recession, depression, or all-out economic collapse, or whether they are caused by your realization that today's food supply is being contaminated by artificial fertilizers, pesticides, and genetically modified organisms, and over-processing of crops into what can hardly be called food. We want to help you through the crunch times in your future by teaching you what we have learned about organic gardening, food storage, and food preparation. We'll bring you into our kitchen and into our garden and share with you what we have learned, hopefully, before your crunch times arrive. Now here is Chef Francois. Welcome back to Crunch Time, where Jesus is king and all our desires are to serve him. We've been working in the garden for the last three or four weeks, and today we're going to work in my front yard planting pecan trees, or pecan trees, depending on how you want to pronounce it. First time I ever went to Texas, I started seeing pecan trees way down in the south. And I thought they only grew in the south. But I have found a species that grows even in uh, hardiness zone 5. And I don't remember the names of them, but they're, they're grown in Indiana. And that's where these came from. And I'm going to be planting them in my front yard, and hopefully in a few years we'll have a few pecans off our own trees right here in upstate New York. Well, today we're going to plant some pecan trees, or pecan trees, if you prefer that pronunciation. I have taken these, these uh, tomato cages, and I've placed them around the yard where I want to plant. There's one over there one in the middle of the yard, and four along the driveway. I placed them where I wanted them, and then I started digging. First thing I did, I got started before I had my camera out here, so I'm going to do it over here the same way. I basically made a circle around the uh, Cage. Feels like I'm hitting stumps from this maple tree right next door here, and this might not be a great place, but this maple tree is going to be dug out, cut down eventually. So, uh, I'm going to try to Tried to work underneath the, the sod. So, I take just the sod off, and then I put my bucket right next to the sod and scrape off as much of the rich topsoil as I can. Sod I may put over in the side yard where the, the garden started over there where there's some spots that's got no grass still. Okay, once I've done that, I'll go back to this original hole where I was working, squaring up the edges and digging down until I get to light colored sand. Shouldn't be any rocks out here in this sandy soil.
Got good topsoil for about six inches deep here. And we get into that lighter colored sand. And I wish I had another place to shovel it into. Got the good topsoil there. And then I'm going to take out at least a foot more deep of sandy soil. And I've got to find something to put it in. Maybe one of my trash cans. In preparation for planting pecans, we had to do a few things. First of all, you have to freeze the pecans for two to three months. What I did is, since this winter was so mild, I didn't think it would freeze them good enough if I left them in the garage or out in the cold. So I just put them in the freezer. Zero degrees in there, that was good. And then the day before you're gonna plant them, you've gotta soak them. Uh, I used warm water and uh, I covered them with a dish so that they would stay submerged. And we soaked them overnight. Uh, for 24 hours and then uh, as you can see later on here I actually cracked the shells a little bit so they could uh, germinate better. Okay I'm down pretty far now. Only hit one root in this one. I'm sure over there I'm gonna hit a lot of roots. All right. Now, I want to take some of my compost, pour it into the bottom a little bit, and then mix it in with some and it's further down. Take some more compost. I want to use about a half a can for each hole. Throw maybe one more shovel of sand. Mix it up. And then, since I'm getting towards the top, I don't want to replace all this good soil we put, we pulled out, and compost with that as well. Well, and a bit more. Not much different than what we do on our pits for our squash and pumpkin. I'm not going to pack it down. Just a little bit more compost, but I got to put one more shovel of dirt first. Leave that half a bucket for somewhere else. If 
thought I would have plenty of good dirt to fill the hole, but not quite. So, I will dig some out of that hole. And I gotta fill this up to the top and put a soaked, overnight soaked seed, which is just a pecan nut, with its shell. Okay, I've scraped off all the dirt I can from the two pieces of sod and uh, mixed it in with a little bit of dead grass that fell off as well. And I'm not going to pack this down, like I said, but uh, I may put the sod back on top with at least a little hole in the middle where I plant the seed. Let's go get one of the seeds. I've got them sitting right inside the door. I may have to crack it open, so I'm gonna have to get my hammer out. Uh, where's my hammer? Okay, I've got a number of seeds here. Two, four, six, just right. Uh, that I have soaked overnight and uh, I just want to crack it just enough so that the water can actually get in there and soak the nut as well but I won't be taking the, the shells off just gonna let the water in and when the nut starts growing it'll push the shell open all right so I'm gonna take this one which is cracked a little bit right there And I'm going to plant it right in the middle. Crack that down, down about even with the top of this dirt. And then when I put my sod back on, I will have corner I've got to take out of the middle of this. Now I wanted to contour the ground around the hole so that it's like a funnel so that any water that falls within a foot of that hole where I planted the pecan all the water would run into that hole. So that will funnel the water in when I go to put water in it. And the seed is right there. So I got to cover it over with a little bit of dirt. And I don't want grass to grow right there, so I'll cover it with clear sand. And get some water and I'll pour it right on there. Let's get my water jug over here. Fill it up with rainwater. And I can pop off this sprinkler thing here. Now let's water the middle first. I'll pop off the middle 
and I'll just soak it all the way around the outside. So I've got a puddle of water that'll soak right down in there. And it should be wet enough to try to do that. And I'm going to go work on the other holes, and when I'm all done, I'll come back. I also want to protect this hole from getting mowed over as soon as a tree comes up. I want it to be able to live without getting uh, cut off with a lawnmower. So I've taken the, the trestle for the tomatoes, and I've bent the legs out a little bit so that it will basically span the entire hole and push it down like that and we've got a finished hole right there well we've got all the holes dug and watered this morning but now it's afternoon so I'm going to water a little bit more here all we need to water is just the just the center of each hole. Each hole has got kind of like a little funnel that slants in so that the water anywhere near it is going to flow into it. And it doesn't run away. That way it'll water when it rains. When I was digging this hole, I hit a cable wire going through there and cut the wire right in half. Luckily it wasn't the wire that runs our TV and cable. It was just uh, an unused one probably for our telephone previous telephone service we now have service with uh, our cable wire before I think that may have been the Verizon wire So, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six pecan trees. Have to have at least one male. And uh, we don't know what they're going to be until, until they uh, are probably three or four years old. So we can see whether they're making any nuts or not. Only the females will make the nuts, but you got to have a male there to pollinate the others. So I figured out of six of them, I may have three males, three females. Hopefully I'll have one male and hopefully it'll be in the middle. And all the rest of them hopefully will be females. But we never know. They might all be males for all I know. Or they may all be females. We don't know. So that's it for the day. Let's check on the garden while we're here. I watered the spinach and kale earlier. I could water the potatoes, but I'm not going to. And I did water the little tomato plants I just planted yesterday. The rest of it's growing great. Here we're washing the parsnips that I just harvested yesterday. That would be the last day of winter. We harvested all winter long in upstate New York. Rutabagas, kale, spinach, parsnips, and 
Hopefully we'll be able to figure out some other crops. Oh, carrots and um, radishes as well. So here we're washing up some parsnips, some of which have more than one root on them because they were either transplanted or they hit a rock and they split the root out into four or five roots. So they're, they're kind of neat looking, but uh, they were still good and we'll find out. They'll be tasty as well. Today is March 12th and I've got a couple parsnips here that have been growing in the garden all winter long. Uh, there wasn't much green sticking up as you can see it's all brown there. This green has just popped up in the last couple days and the root on this parsnip is really weird so I had to had to get a recording of this. This is really neat. I love parsnips. They're nice and sweet and I'm going to cut these up into either a stir fry or french fry and I'm going to eat them cooked in coconut oil. Alright, we have our parsnips all diced up and our coconut oil melting in the frying pan. And we're going to be stir frying that for, I don't know, 10 or 15 minutes or so until it's cooked and it tastes nice and sweet. Maybe put some salt on it, maybe put some of the lemon pepper or Cajun spice on it and we'll eat that right up. Alright, it's cooking right away. Only been a couple minutes and it's already getting yellowish. Our parsnips, which have been growing for almost a year. I planted them last spring. And they stayed in the ground all winter. Alright, it has been about five minutes or less. And you can see that it's already getting brown around the edges. Darker in the middle, crispy even on the edges. Our parsnips are getting soft and almost ready to eat already. They don't take long to cook. Very, very good. Like this one here. Oh yes, excellent. Okay, it's been another minute. I've put some salt and pepper. You can see the little black specks on it. And this has been cooking, I think, less than five minutes total. And it is, I would say, ready to eat right now. So I'm going to turn the heat off and I'm going to let it coast. And I'm going to cover it back up. Good stuff. Alright, it has been one more minute. And it's cooling down. I'm going to add some lemon pepper that uh, comes out pretty fast, so i got to be careful. And also some Tajin, T-A-J-I-N, fruit seasoning. It usually clumps up pretty good inside. And I'm going to add a little bit more salt. And that is the seasoning for the sweet parsnips. And they are already browned. And I'm going to put them into my bowl and serve them. I'm going to use two hands so I've got to put the camera down. And here's our completed dish of stir-fried parsnips. Yum! I actually have too much seasoning on it overpowers the sweet taste of the parsnips it makes it taste a little bit more like rutabaga because I've got too much seasoning on it but nevertheless it is a good meal Yum. 
And we're going to take a whirlwind review of some of the things we've done in the last 38 weeks. And we'll get with these big ones. Well, all right. In a here we have coal. Right. I have shaved some coal, coal slaw, yeah. apple, beets, and squash. Let's taste that. Tell us how it gets browner. Mmm. That looks pretty good. Mix it up one more time. Already the squash is getting really soft. So we're going to dice these up. They don't have to be real small because we're boiling them. We're not stir frying them. So we don't have to have them as small as we do when we're trying to save fuel on a wood stove like we did after cooking it and cooling. Two, four, six, eight, eleven liters of sumac aid. Some tomatoes. Well, we have a few minutes left in our allotted half hour. Share with you the gospel of Jesus Christ. According to the Bible in Romans 3.23, all of us are sinners, and we do not measure up to God's perfection. Romans 6.23 says, The penalty of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yes, Jesus came to earth as a man to pay the price for the sins of mankind. Romans 10.13 says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, saved from the penalty of eternal death. The payment Jesus made for our sins is only available to those who believe and trust in his fulfillment of God's promise to save the world from their sins. If you want to take part of the resurrection of life, and accept the gift of eternal life that Jesus has provided. Or you could reject the gift and take part in the resurrection of damnation unto eternal death. God loves you and has provided a means of eternal life if you will believe and accept the gift. I have accepted and my life has been changed as the Bible tells us it would. I'd like you to consider joining me and all of God's disciples in eternal life. If you want more information, you can email me at crunchtime at roadrunner.com. Until next week, God bless you and yours. And we'll see you again on Crunch Time with Chef Francois.